This series of talks will cover field procedures for each process of chlorination and dechlorination using the H2O neutralizer. I will also cover the major elements of each standard and how it relates to using our equipment with the proper chemicals for each process. This series of talks will cover field procedures for each process of chlorination and dechlorination using the H2O neutralizer. I will also cover the major elements of each standard and how it relates to using our equipment with the proper chemicals for each process. The reason for producing this training series is my belief that the current training is done in general terms without giving answers to the real life field conditions. Yes, this series of training will be a little one-sided featuring how the H2O neutralizer is the answer to your problems, as most of the other training I've seen didn't go into detail on how to solve the field problems that every utility and contractor faces. Our training presentations give my interpretation of AWWA's C651 disinfecting water mains and C655 field dechlorination standards. Both of these standards are performance-based standards with chemical and procedures covering the general requirements to comply with the standard. Equipment is only discussed in general terms. I will put the two together the standards and the equipment to get the task done and done right. Times are changing with the newly revised C651 chlorination standard and the implementing of dechlorination requirements. Procedures that have been used in the past will change in the future due to the revisions. With increased flushing requirements and the need to neutralize all your discharges, chlorinating properly becomes even more important now because of the cost of dechlorination. With the newly revised chlorination standard, the days of loading the pipe up with chlorine during construction is over if not limited severely. The reason for this is the increase in flushing requirements and the awareness of the harm that chlorinated water has on the environment. We have seen over the years the method of loading the pipe with calcium hypochlorite during installation of the pipelines to now having to use other methods. The reason high volume flushing has increased. In the past it was no big deal as the industry was not dechlorinating water being released into the environment. With the requirement in dechlorination, this method has to be controlled to ensure that the released water will be treated properly. The bad news, most dechlorination equipment will not handle high volume flows and still neutralize superchlorinated water. This is the reason why your method of chlorination will change. The continuous feed method will become more common. The slug method will be used. However, it is very hard to control. Dechlorination may not be called out in all project specifications. However, both the U.S. and Canada at the federal level with every state and province have water quality criteria regulations for discharge limits not only for chlorine but also for pH and dissolved oxygen. So even if the project specifications do not call out for this step and you do harm to the environment, you will still get fined. The requirement for dechlorination of chlorinated water being discharged into the environment has been around since the original Clean Water Act. Many utilities and contractors have tried over the years to comply with this requirement with homemade equipment. Sometimes it would work, other times it would not. In most cases, it would only homemade equipment would only work with potable water, not with superchlorinated water conditions. The lack of the equipment that does both tasks is a problem for both utilities and contractors. Utilities can't afford to have equipment that gets used limited times during each year. And contractors need equipment that will handle both tasks, requiring a performance range from low to high flows. The dechlorination standard is a performance based standard that covers both potable and superchlorinated water as well as non-chemical and chemical treatment with devices that are classified either as passive or active using a chemical dechlorination. There are many options to choose from so determining the right combination is important to ensure that the 
task is done right the first time. In our dechlorination talk, we will cover chemical treatment with a comparison between passive and active devices and what makes them work. Each talk will cover the major elements of the standard and how it relates to using the H2O neutralizer to accomplish the task at hand. When chlorinating your water system, you have a choice of three different chemicals to choose from, liquid or gas chlorine, sodium hypochlorite, and calcium hypochlorite. We do not sell any of these chemicals as they are all readily available in all market areas. Our talk will concentrate on the sodium hypochlorite and calcium hypochlorite as these are the two chemicals that are used with the H2O neutralizer. Our talk on dechlorination chemicals will cover only the environmentally safe chemicals. Their cost to neutralize out one pound of chlorine and any other additional safety concerns that one should consider when neutralizing chlorinated water and discharging into the environment. When equipment is covered in each talk, we will go over what is currently available and how it compares with the H2O neutralizer. We will also go over chlorine testing for both low and high levels of chlorine. The H2O neutralizer is the only device currently available to both chlorinate and dechlorinate with flow ranges from nine gallons per minute to either 1,250 for the 3M device or over 4,000 gallons per minute for the 5M device. This is the only device that can be connected to service lines as small as three quarters of an inch and still give full performance. Future training programs will give you all the details on how we can save you money and time using the H2O neutralizer.